Pesticide Not Required is a survival-like with a twist. I would call it the Stardew Valley of survival likes, but that feels a little bit condescending, as I think the things that it does differently is an interesting step for the survival like genre, and not just brotato with potato. So join me, Zep, as we take a closer look at Pesticide Not Required. The problem I have with the average survival like is the map. It's pretty dull, it's pretty flat, it doesn't serve a wider purpose, they're big, they sometimes have pickups, they sometimes look pretty, they usually don't look pretty, and that's about it. It's a lot of free real estate with not much going on. Last time on Pocket Monster Z, we had a game which added destructibility to the survival like formula. To great effect, a map that could be shaped by the player as they saw fit. Primarily, this was used to create bottlenecks and escape routes, but it gave a level of interaction with the world which is usually absent from these games. This time we have a survival like where the map is an extension of the player. It isn't just the plane of existence that you wander around on. It's a part of you. In classic survival likes, you get your XP from enemies. You use that XP to level up, and you choose upgrades as you level up as a little treat. The toy inside the kinder egg of leveling up. Here you're shaking enemies, the bugs, upside down for their loose pocket change as you murder them, using that money to buy seeds for planting. These seeds grow into plants, funnily enough, and that give new weapons, and um, there's also plants which give XP. Different plants have different periods of time to grow, and they have different water requirements. Elsewhere on the map, you have um, ore that you can mine just for immediate money, and ponds with fish in them, which you can fish for XP. You're essentially a frog pioneer, living off the land and growing with your land. Instead of my movement only being dictated by the enemies around me and how I wanted to corral them or avoid them, now maybe I want to go do some fishing. Maybe I want to water my plants. Maybe I do just want to massacre the bugs like a froggy snow piercer. This adds another element beyond just running around in circles and bullet helling your way to victory. You can't go it alone. You need to work in tandem with the land in order to survive. This really does differentiate this game from your average survivor like. It makes the game feel more defensive. You feel a bit more possessive over your home and you're not going to let the bugs take it over and overrun you and run you out of town. It makes you care a lot more about the map, the place that you're in. Like an, almost an island in a world of peril. Tell me the last time that you played a survival like that made you care about the world around you. And if you say anything, I'll just call you a liar because there really isn't one. So many of them are just on these wide, flat expanses which go nowhere and outside of when you're actually in them, they just don't seem to exist. Here is quite different. You have your house right there. That's where you spend your time outside of each run. It's all interlinked with each other. Your local vendor is an ant who has betrayed all of Bugkind in order to assist you. A story, unfortunately, which we, as far as I can see, never gets expanded on and never gets introduced. I look forward to the sequel where you play as the merchant, get it, and escape the grasshopper's gulag. Out of the gulag, into the spotlight! I presume that's what happened to this poor ant. Why else would you betray every bug you've ever loved? As well as weapon seeds, there's se seed seeds, plant seeds. You can also buy pets who can plant seeds for you, water plants, and even help you in combat. Not that you'll need it. From lawnmower blades to giant water spouts, you're the most capable amphibian to ever grace a video game. I'm looking at you, Frogger. So this is the core gameplay loop. Each run takes place over the course of a season. Like real life seasons, you've got spring, summer. You know what? You're an adult. You know what the seasons are. You have all four of them. Weapon-wise, there's a good variety, but I think you could do with a few more. But I guess it's hard to come up with many garden-themed weapons. Eventually you have options like bomb, which is fair, because I look at my own garden and I do just want to bomb it out of existence, so... I can relate. You have a main hub outside of the seasonal runs, which I mentioned above. It's actually situated in the map, basically. 
This is where you can upgrade your frog, switch frogs, and even has a large array of customization options a la Hades. I also found the art style very refreshing. A lot of survival likes have been hanging out with their souls-like cousins too much. Not everything has to be wastelands and gothic castles and swamps. It's a nice change of scenery. With the lack of all the darkness and gore, you have a game which is ideal for a younger sibling or a kid if you're looking to introduce them to survival likes. This is a great gateway into the genre. Yes, the frog game is a gateway drug. I've said it now, and I won't take it back. So other than the need for a few more weapons, do I have any other negative words for the game? Not really, I think the game has a clear vision, and I think it executes on it well. I would say I wish some of the weapons to have a bit more interplay, like if there were options between weapons that could complement each other a little bit better, or maybe there were upgrades which would be more beneficial to one weapon or another, but the upgrades, as far as I can tell, seem universally good for all weapons. But still, this seems not entirely against the game's overall design philosophy. It seems to be a, uh, yeah, as I said before, kind of like a gateway to the survival-like genre. It's not too overly complicated, it's not too punishing. Um, it is a very relaxing experience for something where you're fighting off endless hordes of bugs. Oh, another map would be cool though. Maybe make me the king of my own froggy castle? Okay, I'm a bit of a hypocrite there. I know I said moments ago, no medieval theming, but you know, I can, I can want both things. Performance wise, no issues. No bugs, pun intended. It's a pretty simplistic game, so I think you could run this on anything from a Steam Deck to a Samsung fridge. In fact, you can run it on the Steam Deck. I've played it on the Steam Deck. It's great. The game also has an arachnophobia mode, which is excellent. I know in the original demo, which I played during Steam Next Fest, it didn't have this option. Um, as a, a person with a fiancé who's terrified of spiders and thus making me the local spider wrangler, I really appreciate this option because it gives people like her a chance to play these sorts of games. I know the initial impression is, bugs? I hope there's not spiders. Don't worry, there doesn't have to be. You have that option. Overall, it's clear I like Pesticide Not Required. It brings harmony between the player and the game world in a way that I've not really experienced in a survival like before. If that sounds interesting, give it a go. But who is your favorite video game amphibian? And how many times have I had to re-record myself say the word amphibian? I'm nailing it now though. Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, I would like to see more. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, hit the screen. Just windmill your arms, you click all the things and that will help me out. Oh, and if you um, like indie games and also uh, for some reason cringy early 2000s reality TV, Come check us out on Twitch. We do both of those things. It's a great pairing. Link is in the description down below. I think that's all the end of video housekeeping. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.